Hey, welcome back, guys. And what are we talking about this time? We're looking at the uh, CBC, but this time we're adding on the differential piece. And what is a differential? Helping to differentiate between the different levels of cells. So, wow, it is fantastic to understand your laboratory shorthand when it comes to the CBC. The icing on the cake is the differential, okay? So, you're in the right place. All right, here we go. Uh, what are we doing at RN Cliff Notes? Helping students to see through larger concepts, giving you what? What do we call them? Study smart strategies. Absolutely. That's right. You want to be armed with those, right? So your number in your paper or your device from one to five. Okay. And we're doing the CBC. So I need to see that fish bone of yours. So show me what that thing looks like. So draw the laboratory shorthand diagram, and we're going to input the results. So go ahead and draw that diagram, and we'll be inputting the results as well. Right? And what? It should look like, it should look like, now if you haven't drawn anything, that's a daggone shame. <laughs> but don't worry about it. You're in the right place. But come on, you got to get this knowledge, okay? All right, boom, there it is. We said CBC. That's what you should have drawn on your paper. Now, the other question I get, do we need to label it? Yes, right? Do we need to put in the number ranges? Absolutely yes, every time, okay? So go ahead and do that. All right. Now, pause this video if you need to. Especially teachers, if you're watching, you got your class doing this thing. Yeah, give them a quiz, grade them on this stuff. Yeah, right? right. Here we go. All right, now, two through five. So you fill in the labels for each section, the approximate number of results. So we're giving those numbers two through five, you see it in a minute. All right, so number one was what? Actually drawing that thing without any help. That was number one in the quiz. Number two, putting that label in there, and the number, the approximate number. Three, label and number. Four, that one's label and number. Five, what goes there, okay? That's how we arranged it. All right, and should look like that. Yes, all right? We already talked about our magic numbers, isn't that right? And if you hadn't seen that, boy, go check that out, okay? A little bit longer video, but there's some higher science, you know, higher nursing science in there. And those numbers are 3, 4, 5, and 7, yeah. okay? Why? Because we keep seeing them repetitively in what we're studying. We said 3, 4, 5, and 7, what? 4, 4, 4, right? 5, 5, 4, and 5. Okay. All right, anyway. Uh, so we've got a hemoglobin of approximately 14, and we discussed that further in the previous video, and we'll come back to that in a minute. A uh, hematocrit of 44, right? And we also learned that this directly correlated, number-wise, to the coagulation studies, okay? And we've got our WBCs, right? Our white blood cells, but give me another name for those. What's the other name for WBCs? And uh, you should have said leukocytes. Absolutely. While we're on that, how about the red blood cells? Because that's what this part is talking about, up and down. What's another name for the red blood cells? And you should have said erythrocytes. Great. All right. That leaves the platelets over here. 150 to 450. Now, you said we come back to this here. Very important. If we're talking about the need for a blood transfusion and things like that, we may mention that one of our magic numbers was seven. And let's emphasize why that's the case. Okay? Uh, generally speaking, you're the RN, you're the RN taking care of a patient, and your patient's hemoglobin, right? We're expecting it to be roughly 14. Now, granted, this varies from men to women. And it varies by age group, but we're, we're working with a flat number to keep our sanity, isn't that right? 
Okay, so so 14 and your patient's hemoglobin comes back at 6.2. Mm. Wow, that's way away from 14. You're wondering to yourself, all right, but what what impact does it have? 6.2 is less than 7. Because 7 tends to be the cutoff. Where doctors are looking to do a blood transfusion and throw that patient's hemoglobin back over the number seven. So you can anticipate your patient's hemoglobin, right? Instead of anywhere near 14, it's 6.2, right? Then all of a sudden, boop, check the computer and what? An order came through from the doctor to transfuse a unit of packed red blood cells, what, stat? Okay? Oh, but wait a minute. What if the hemoglobin is lower than 6.2? It's 5 something. Wow. Boop. Right? What popped up on the computer? Now the doctor wants you to transfuse two units of packed red blood cell stat. What is he or she trying to do? Get that patient's hemoglobin back over 7. Absolutely. Right? What did I say? Hey, the Zarin Cliff Notes, man. You're going to learn the inside scoop. Yeah. All right? Anyway, moving on. When we talk about a differential, right, we're talking about other types of cells in more detail. So we're not stopping at red blood cells, you know what I mean, erythrocytes, leukocytes. We're going deeper, talking about neutrophils, right, segments of the white blood cells, lymphocytes, and breaking those down, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. A little add-on bonus here. And, you know, it was just, it was just taking you deeper the Cliff Notes way goes like this. Neutrophils. Neutrophils are like a part of your army of white blood cells that defend your body. But you got other fighters in there. Eosinophil, basophils. Notice. Fighters. Emphasis on that. What? Fight. Fill. When that suffix or their last name is fill, they tend to be your fighters. Okay? And your fighters, they feel, they feel, or they look like they feel gritty like sandpaper. And what they do is under the microscope, you'll see a neutrophil or one of these guys, they'll get next to a, the pathogen that's trying to invade inside your body, right? And you'll see them scratching back and forth. And what are they doing? Scratching that pathogen open until it rips open and dies. That's how they fight, but they look like they feel what? Sandy, gritty, lumpy, right? And that's how they tear open an invader, okay? And your main ones are the neutrophils here in red. They make up the vast majority of those fighters. So that's why your patient get put, gets put on what kind of precautions when that, that number gets low? Absolutely, neutropenic precautions. So, right, you tend to not hear about other types of precautions is what? Neutrophil, right? Neutropenic precautions, because that's the vast majority of your fighters, like 70%, something like that, is uh, neutrophils. Anyway, uh, the other thing that we want to take a look at, in addition to that, are your lymphocytes. These two, we're going to zero in those the most. We're going to zero in on those guys, okay? Because those tell us a lot if they're elevated. What, neutrophils? Lymphocytes, if they're elevated. All right, so anyway, if there's an elevation in lymphocytes, right? All right, what I want you to think of is a Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> All right, I know some people might chuckle. Look, don't, don't laugh at my Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> All right, <laughs> this is the best I can do on PowerPoint. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so my Louis Vuitton bag, what we got going on here? There's a lot happening in this picture. Notice that the L is what? Elevated. So if there's an elevation in the lymphocytes, right? There is a V there, Louis Vuitton, right? What? Then there is a viral infection. So if you're looking at the CBC with differential report, CBC with diff, and there's an elevation in the lymphocytes, there's what? There's a viral infection that your patient has. And that's very important when it comes to how we're going to treat it because we tend to let viruses run their course viruses 
pretty much done this worse in like 72 hours, right? Uh, yeah, a patient may feel sick, but the virus itself has is, is gone through its active phase. A patient just feels like a residual sickness. We could be wasting antibiotics, right? Okay, anyway, moving on. Neutrophils this time, right? So now if there's an elevation in the neutrophils, okay. So we wouldn't have the Louis Vuitton bag this time. Let's see what we got. Bang, that's right, New Balance sneakers. <laughs> yeah. The biggest NB you ever seen on those bad boys, isn't that right? <laughs> and this time what's elevated? The N, all right? The neutrophils are elevated. And if the neutrophils are elevated, like we see in the picture there, what's going on? Now we realize that our patient has what? A bacterial infection. That's right. A bacterial infection and so that's it the quick right the quick and dirty way to interpret a, a CBC with differential report is to picture me committing this fashion faux pas right in that right so I've got on new balance sneakers and in my case I wouldn't have a Louis Vuitton purse sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> but a Louis Vuitton suit right okay Louis Vuitton suit, we got Louis Vuitton stamped all over that thing, right? Blazer and white and blue New Balance sneakers, isn't that right? Check that out. <laughs> so that's the great fashion mistake. And that'll help you, you know what I mean, be able to interpret a CBC with differential report. All right, let's take a closer look. All right, so we said we've got this infection. We're trying to figure out which one it is that our patient has. Patient's just sick, you know, we're trying to figure it out. So the report comes back. If we've got elevation, we said in lymphocytes. LV, Louis Vuitton, right? Viral infection. NB, new balance, neutrophils are elevated, bacterial infection. And uh, by the way, I was gonna share a story with you. I do believe this came out of Gainesville where uh, I think the doctor was at home or on their way to the hospital, called the nurse to try to follow up and see if the CBC report had been done. And uh, the nurse happened to have been one of my students. So when the doc calls and says, uh, hey, is that, that CBC reported? And she says, uh, yes, sir. Um, well, as a matter of fact, it's right here. And um, it appears your patient has a bacterial infection, right? And he's, he's paused for a minute on the phone, like, wait a minute, right? Is she interpreting my CBC with differential report for me? Uh, he goes, okay, bacterial infection, got it, thanks, right? Comes in, and, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure in his mind he's thinking, you know what, if she's right about that report, I'm going to buy everybody on that floor lunch, right? <laughs> Pulls into the hospital, right? Gets to the floor, checks out the report, and sure enough, boom, right? Yeah, patient's got a bacterial infection. Why? Because the neutrophils are elevated, right? And whoa. But he kept his promise, and he bought all the nurses and staff at that facility up on that floor. He bought all of them lunch. Appreciate you for that, Doc. That's right. Some nurses are learning everything they need to know and more. Okay? Absolutely. So, hey, thank you guys. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Right? Keep studying smart. All right? Take care.